everyone and welcome to the Mountain of the Lord Camp 2019 with none other than our very own father and pastor here in the United Denominations, Bishop Dag Heward Mills. For those of you who may not know, the Mountain of the Lord Camp is a camp where first lovers from all over the world gather every single year in Mampongana at the Anakazo Bible School to hear preaching and teaching from Bishop Dag Heward Mills. This year, the theme of our camp is Jesus, the Savior of the world, and it has been beautiful so far. Yesterday, we had our first day. We had a few sessions, and it was absolutely powerful. Bishop Dag preached to us and taught us about who Jesus Christ was. He told us that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man, and he told us that that is probably one of the most favorite descriptions that Jesus had for himself, because on multiple occasions in the Bible, he described himself as the Son of Man. He asked the disciples, who do you say that the Son of Man is? Who do you say that I am? So we know that Jesus Christ was born of a man here on earth. It's a miracle and that is exactly who our Savior is. We also know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He came all the way from heaven to earth just to save us from our sins and for that we are eternally grateful and eternally blessed. I'm so happy to be here again for another Mountain of the Lord Camp with our father Bishop Dag Heward Mills. Each and every year this camp just continues to grow. More and more people attend this camp. This year we have over 4,000 children here in attendance to listen to our pastor Bishop Dag Heward Mills. People have gathered from all over the world. We have people here from the United Kingdom, the United States of America, Botswana, Malawi, Zimbabwe, Zambia, South Africa, anywhere that you can think of, name it because the people are here, ready to hear the word of God. And we have been so blessed so far. It's only been one day so far and it's been mega, it's been powerful, it's been exciting, it's been exhilarating. And I don't know what more God has in store for us today, but I'm sure that it's gonna continue to be powerful and we're going to be blessed. One of the things that Bishop said is that he's going to speak to us about our destiny and each and every day through Throughout the sessions, he's going to be speaking to us, prophesying into our lives, telling us about Jesus and telling us about our destiny. Yesterday, he preached from 2 Timothy and he told us that we are appointed to be teachers. We are appointed to be preachers. It is our duty now that we are saved to tell others the good news about Jesus Christ, that he came to seek and save that which is lost so that we can all go to heaven. This camp is absolutely amazing as you can hear prayer has just started the atmosphere is charged the first lovers are expectant excited for what God has in store for us today and I'm sure that you would want to meet some of the people that have come to this camp so do stay tuned there may be an opportunity to say hello to some of the people later on but stay tuned because it's going to be powerful if you're watching online do not go anywhere because every single session of this camp will be streamed live 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 so you don't have to miss out on even one minute of this camp if you're tuned in on Facebook don't go anywhere click the like button click the share button and of course subscribe to the Dag Heward Mills Facebook page so that you can keep up to date on everything that Bishop Dag Heward Mills posts on his Facebook page for those who may not know for those who may not already subscribe search for Dag Heward Mills on Facebook click that subscribe button click that like button and you will receive notifications every single time Bishop Dag goes live or a new post has been posted. On YouTube it's Dag Heward Mills. Again the same principle applies. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button so you can listen to these messages from Jesus the Savior of the world on YouTube and of course all past messages preached by Bishop Dag Heward Mills. If you want to follow on Twitter it's at Evangelist Dag and the live stream will be streaming through Periscope so stay live, stay connected, stay watching you can even make some friends in the comment section who also are being blessed by this camp and why not stay connected on all platforms head on over to instagram it's at dag h mills so you can keep up to date on all the photos all the posts that bishop dag posts i'm so excited i'm so blessed to be here all the way in ghana in the aquia pim mountains here at the anakazo bible school you're only seeing a small section of the bible school right now but this bible school is huge 
It's beautiful. It's amazing. And we are so blessed to be with a father, with a pastor, with a prophet, with a teacher, with an apostle like Bishop Dag Heward Mills, who has created such a beautiful campus for us all to come to each and every year to hear the word of God being preached. This is a real Bible school with real Bible school students who live here, who learn about ministry, who learn about pastoring, who learn about teaching. And the campus is filled. Every part of the hall inside is filled. People are sitting on the stage. People are sitting on the floor. People are sharing seats because everybody wants to be close to the anointed and his anointing. If you couldn't make it to the mountain of the Lord camp this year, I am deeply sorry. But as I said, you can stay tuned online. And if I were you, I would not miss out on this opportunity. Put your headphones in, play it out loud, whatever works best for you. Make sure you stay connected because your destiny will surely be changed as you tune into this camp, as you hear preaching, as you hear teaching, as you hear prophetic words, your life will surely be blessed. Bishop Dag Heward Mills is an anointed prophet of God. The things he says practically come to pass. And I believe that you want some good words to come into your life. I believe you want some power to come into your life. I believe you want some miracles, some healing in your life. So stay tuned because they will surely come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. People are so excited, so expectant for today's session. I'm sure that as we continue to sit here in the presence of our Father, we're going to learn more about who Jesus Christ is and how he is our Savior and what we can do in order to do more in the ministry. It's not time for us to sit back and relax. It's not time for us to take the back seat and become cool. It's actually time to be on fire for God. It's time for us all to be zealously affected always in a good thing, not only when God is present with us, but all Ways. We always need to be zealously affected and I believe that this camp is a good example of stirring us up again, stirring up young people to keep them excited, to keep them expectant, to keep them on fire for God and that is exactly what we are expecting here at the Mountain of the Lord camp. That's why our colours are red and white because red shows the fire of the Lord and white shows the purity and holiness. I'm so excited, so blessed to be here and I cannot wait to head on into the session and I'm sure that you are too. So without much further ado, I am very pleased to welcome you to the Mountain of the Lord Camp 2019, Jesus, the Saviour of the world. We'll see you soon. Celebrate the word of God that has been sent to you. Shoka Talimo. Luke 21 and verse 38. The Bible says, go to 36. Luke 21 and 36. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accountable, sorry, you may be accounted worthy to escape all the things that shall come to pass. How many of you know that many things are coming to pass? One of the things coming to pass is judgment. 
And Jesus, these are the words of Jesus. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. 37. And in the day time, he was teaching in the temple and at night he went out and abode in the mount that is called Mount of Olives. And 38. And all the people came early in the morning to him in the temple. For what reason? To hear Jesus. How many of you are here to hear Jesus? I want us to pray and tell Jesus, I came to hear from you. Therefore, speak to me, Jesus. Speak to me. Speak to me, Jesus. Speak to me. I came to know you, Jesus. I came to receive from you, Jesus. And amazingly, we are here to know about Jesus, the Savior of the world. Lift your hands with me to Jesus. Tell him, I came to hear from you early this morning. Therefore, deliver your word to me and help me to hear from you. Go ahead and pray this prayer and tell Jesus to speak to you because what he speaks to you is spirit and is life. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. If somebody is ready to receive life from Jesus this morning, then let that person's hands be lifted and tell Jesus, I want to hear from you. Speak to me. Speak to me this morning. Speak to me this morning. All the people came very early in the morning into the church. And the reason why they came was to hear Jesus Christ. You can literally hear the voice of Jesus from the voice of the prophet. Therefore, go ahead and pray and tell him, Lord, I need to hear from you. Speak to me this morning. 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 I came for to hear you, Jesus. I came for to hear you, Jesus. Go ahead and pray. The words I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. If you want to receive abundant life in ministry, then go ahead and ask him to speak to you because he can. He's able. He's doing it. He's done it before. He's doing it. And he can do it again. Speak to me, Jesus. Speak to me, Jesus. In the next session, speak to me. In the next session, speak to me. Let my word come. Let my word come. Let my word come. Let me be watchful for my word. Let me be watchful for my word. Speak to me, Jesus. Go ahead and pray, everybody. Go ahead and pray. Is somebody praying this morning? Are you desperate to hear from Jesus? Are you desperate to hear from Jesus? Remember, there are so many kinds of voices in this world and there is none of them without importance. But the voice of Jesus Christ supersedes all voices. Pray and ask him to speak to you. 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 Go ahead. 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 Lebando la baba. 
Shando la baba, shenda la baba, shenda la baba. I'm here for the word of God. I'm here for the word of God. On the Isle of Patmos, John the Revelator went for the word. He went not for anything else. He went for the way. He went straight for the way. Jesus, I'm here for your way. Jesus, I'm here for your way. Send me your way. Jesus, bless me by your way. Help me to know more of you. 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 Yes. 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 Teach me, Jesus. Teach me this morning. Teach me this morning. Bless me this morning. Bless me by your way. Bless me by your way. Help me receive your way. Help me receive your way. Help me obey your way. Help me do your way. Let me not just be a hearer. Let me also be a doer of the word that I hear from you. Jesus, thank you. Everyone lift your hands and thank God for the word that you are going to hear this morning. We give you praise. We give you thanks. We adore you in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Father, thanks for the blessing of this morning and your great guidance, your mighty Holy Spirit working in our lives. We are grateful in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Right. Jesus, Savior of the world. Amen. Who is Jesus? Savior of the world. Amen. And Jesus saving us is a very wonderful and amazing thing. Amen. It's very important that we know who Jesus is. He is the savior of the world, the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter one. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. Amen. And the word was God. Hallelujah. So, if there is a beginning, all right, if there is a beginning, the beginning was with God. In the beginning was God. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was God. In the beginning was the Word. Hallelujah. So anything that was in the beginning must be respected. Amen. Amen. One of the people that is respected in Ghana is Kwame Nkrumah. His statue is um, 
in the middle of the city. And I'm sure many countries have the same kind of statue of somebody who was there in the beginning when the country was being created. Because these countries we have are created nations. They were not there before. Are you with me? So, in the beginning, in the beginning was the word. So, the kind of respect that the word is to have, no one can ever have in the very, very beginning of all beginnings. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? So, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. All right? And this word is another name being given for for God, for Jesus, the word. And that in itself is a revelation to you that as you receive the word, you are receiving God. Yes. So that is why you can sit here and receive the word all day without even praying. Because many of you have not prayed. But by the end of the day, you see that You are feeling anointed. Is that not so? And the anointed feeling that you are having and the presence of God comes from the fact that the word was God. The word is God. That is why people who listen to messages and who listen to the word being delivered are always different from those who do not because you cannot help but to change as the word comes to you because you are getting an overload dose of God. Amen. Amen. You are getting heavy doses of God. Are you with me? Yeah. So, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. So, God is the word. That is a mystical declaration about who God is. So the more, you know, you get of God, of the word, the more you are receiving of God himself. God is coming into you. Yes. Now, there are different ways to receive the word. One of the ways is to receive by reading. Another way is to receive by hearing. All right? Now, hearing is more, has a different effect because the word seems to fly in the air and the word seems to have some kind of power in it. Are you with me? And the power that the word has and seems to have, are you with me? Yeah. It's actually the power of God himself. Because the power of the word is the power of God. Because the word was God. And the word is God. Now, when you listen to a message, it doesn't mean that you have received the word. When you listen to a message, it doesn't mean that you have received the word. That is why 
you listen to a message again and you ask yourself, was I at this meeting? Was I, was I there? And yes, you were there, but you did not receive the word. You heard the word, but you did not receive the word. And that is why it is repeated soaking of the same thing that often leads to you receiving something. Receiving God. Yes. If Bob Marley had a spirit of revolution or a spirit of um, if Bob Marley had a spirit of revolution or a spirit of rebellion I don't know what spirit he had if you listen to his song once you may not imbibe that spirit but if you listen to it continuously, you could easily have a certain spirit. Yes. Because the words continually coming into you before you realize you are saying things. You don't know what you are even saying. Yeah. So, um, because we have all heard on the radio songs that we didn't want to hear. Sometimes you work in a shop which is playing all kinds of things. It doesn't mean that evil spirits are entering you when you enter the shop. There are some people who take everything to the wrong. To the wrong extreme until it makes nonsense of the preaching of the word. Are you with me? Beautiful. So in the beginning, at the very beginning, was the word. So before there was anything else, all the stars, all the moons, all the 50 moons of Jupiter, yeah. all the 30 moons of Saturn, all the one moon of this earth. Before there, were, there was any water flowing here, before the forests, and the tigers and the lions and the earth and the seas were filled with fishes and living things, before birds started flying, before the angels were created, before Lucifer was created, before human beings were created, in the beginning was the word. He was there. The same was in the beginning with God. Don't try to understand and ask me, so who made God? I don't think you should. You see, there are some questions that we don't have the answers for. And there are some assumptions you are supposed to make. And I know that art students will find it difficult because in maths, we have things like dy dx is equal to what? And there are many formulae where you have to just accept that this thing is, this is what it is. This into brackets, this divided by this times the square root of this is equal to this. And, and if you try to go further, your mind will explode. That was the difficult part for me when I, got, when I started doing ad maths. We are, when I asked how, why is this, this? 
He said, no, just it is this. <laughs> That's the part. And you are supposed to know these things are just how they are. The origins are not what is necessary. So the same was in the beginning with God. People that have been with me from the beginning are different from people that came in later. So the people at the beginning are of a different order and rank. That is why it is always in your interest to know who is there at the beginning. Because those people are different from those who come along the line when things are working. So right at the beginning, before anything was working, was God. And this great God who is beyond the stars. And I I think... Honestly speaking, that in terms of physical direction to where God is, is above the stars, as the Bible says, the stars. And there is no human ability to get there. So I think what is happening is that we are seeing both physically we can see but have an impossibility physically speaking to even get there because the stars are so far and so huge that it doesn't even add up if you want to know where are the stars. And that is why you can travel from this side of the earth to the other side of the earth and when you look up, you see the same star on the same day. Yeah. Because they are so far that whether it is here or there, it's, it's, it's in the same, it's, it's here and here, it's the same. Yeah. Are you with me? Yes. yes. So I will ascend above the stars of God. That is what Lucifer said. And the Bible says the Son of Man will be in the heart of the earth. All right? Now, verse 3. We are talking about who is Jesus. He is the word. Yeah. Even if you can't pray, read your Bible. Even if you can't pray, put on a message. And keep soaking the same messages. Keep soaking the same, the ones you like. Keep soaking it. Don't soak in jokes. Soak the word. Amen. Amen. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Now, in Ghana, in the beginning was Kwame Nkrumah. The same was in the beginning with the white people who were here. All things were made by him. The Termamoto Way was made by him. The University of Science and Technology was made by him. The Winneba School of Music was made by him. Akosombo Dam was made by him. And what again? All things were made by him. Adomi Bridge was made by him. Yes. And a few other things. But not many things. And without him was not anything made that was made. 
Most of the good secondary schools were built by him, where were built in his time. The Independence Square, where we have our Good Friday service, was made by him. Yes. So he was in the beginning, and all things were made by him, and without him was not any of these things made that was made. Now, our Jesus was in the beginning and all things were made by him. The sun was made by him. The moon was made by him. The stars were made by him. By the way, a star is Far wilder than a planet. Far. If you took an airline from Accra, how would you want to cross the earth? You cross from Accra to, I mean, it's not so far, but Accra fly to Ethiopia. That would be six hours. Then from Ethiopia to Singapore would be 10, 12 hours, 12 hours. That's 18 hours. Then from Singapore to America would be 12 hours again. So 12 plus 18 is what? 30 hours. And then from America you can come to Accra. Will be nine hours. Washington to nine to Accra. That's how 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 many hours? Thirty nine hours. Now, if you took one of the stars like Regal or Beetlejuice, if you had a plane flying at thirty seven thousand miles per hour. Do you understand that that, that speed? That's accident speed. It would need 1,200 years to cross the surface of the star. To cross over the star. The The distance in terms of the size of the star. To cross over, just like how I said, we'll cross the whole of the earth with a plane. If you took a plane, either it's at the, either at the speed of the plane or at the speed of, it's the speed of the rocket. Going at that top speed, it would take 1,200 years. That means you would die on the plane, you would give birth on the plane, you would eat on the plane, you will, uh, you go to work on the plane, you grow up on the plane. Your children will grow up on the plane. Your children will die on the plane. They will be buried on the plane. You will dissolve on the plane. Your children will give birth on the plane. They will die on the plane. Your children's children will die on the plane. 1,200, about 10, 12 times. So the plane, if the plane takes off now in 2019... It would get there in the year 3,219 to cross just the surface, not to get to the star. And that is one star. Yes. That's, That's how huge a star is. So a planet is very small and earth is very small. Yeah. Yeah. Now all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Is that not amazing? amazing. Wow. Wow. In him was life. In Jesus was life. 
Amen? Amen. And the life was the light of men. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. Yes. The life was the light of men. Wow. Wow. So Jesus is full of life. Life, a new life. Life for us. Now, these things are mysterious. How many agree that they are mysterious? They are not so easy to understand. But they are true. And there are many things you don't understand that are important. Do you understand how I speak into this stick and you are hearing it loud and clear? No. You do not understand. But it's important. In this is sound. In this is sound. And the sound is helping men accept it. Don't understand it. Hallelujah. So in him was life and the life was the light of men. Wow. So there is life in Jesus. So when you have Jesus, you have life. When you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. So all the people in the world who don't have Jesus don't have life. And the life was the light of men. And everybody who has Jesus has light. The light of God. And has light for his life. Amen. Amen. Is it powerful? Amen. Amen. Very powerful. 1 John 5, 11. This is the record that God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. God has given to us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Verse 12. He that has the son has life. And he that has not the son of God has not got life. Are you there? So that is exactly what John said. He that has the son has life. And it's also John who is saying this. Same John. So when you have Jesus, you have life. I have found a new life. Is there a song like that? I have found a new life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I have found a new life. Yes. And without Jesus, your life is like a rabid animal running around after your desires, following every feeling that comes into you. Chasing after every diverse, diverted, perverted desire and lust. And when you find Jesus, 
you realize that life is more than following feelings and following desires that are real and that are raging in you. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. Back to John. And the light shineth, and the life was the light of men. Yes. Now, human beings were on this earth growing up as animals. Men were eating men. There are many tribes that eat fellow men. Huh? <laughs> yes. Many. Do you know any? Many of us. Our ancestors have eaten human beings. Huh? In Ghana, I'm sure. Nigeria, I'm sure. You are all pretending as though you don't know any country. You should mention a country. You don't know which country. I must be talking about somewhere else. South America. Hmm. Many of us don't know our left from our right. Struggling. Struggling. Are you listening? Yes. And we were just like animals. But in him was a new life to be found. And that life was the light of human beings. Jesus, Savior of the world. Amen. Amen. Now the light shines in the darkness. And the darkness comprehendeth it not. So when Jesus the light shines in the world, the world does not and cannot relate with it. Yes. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness of the light that all men through him might believe. All right? So this John came to talk about the light, not that he himself was the light. Verse 7, verse 8. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. So, John the Baptist, who was the greatest of all men born of a woman, was not the light. So, how much more you? If John the Baptist was not the light, how can you also be the light? But he was sent like we have been sent, to bear witness of the light or to talk about the light. That is what he was sent to do. So your work and my work is to bear witness of the light, to talk about that light, to speak about that light, not to speak about economic emancipation or how to make your first million dollars or to preach about how to have so many things. No, we are to bear witness of that light. Talk about that light. We are to talk about Jesus Christ. That is the, that is the work we have been given. Amen. 
Are you with me? Yes. How many are going to accept that job? That will make you a very great person. Yes. Now, he was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of the light. Verse 9. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Now, everybody who comes into the world, are you with me? Needs this light. And, and that's the true light. And as usual, if there is a true light, there will be false lights. The very fact that there is true good money means there is false money. And the existence of the counterfeit tells you that there is real money. And it's only because there is something real that false versions pop up all over the place. And so there are many people that have come to this world that claim to be the light. Yes. Yes. But Jesus Christ is the true light that lighteth every man that comes into the world. He is the true light. Hallelujah. Jesus is the true light. Amen. Hallelujah. The true light. Amen. If you follow the true light, you will arrive at your destination. But if you follow the wrong light, you will arrive at a shocking place. There is a story that I heard of a true story of this lady who was a pastor's child, but one day she rose up and she told her parents, I am tired of being carried to church every day. Church, I want to experience the world. And I want to be free to go where I want to go and to do what I want to do and to be happy to have love and have feelings have excitement have joy and her parents were taken aback by this because her parents were pastors but they were they were sad and the the father said the, the, the father decided to say nothing because he didn't know what to say. And he told his wife, we'll just pray about it. That very night, she had a dream. That very night. And in the dream, she found herself standing somewhere all alone. But in the distance, she saw a city with bright, shining, gleaming, flashing lights. Very beautiful. Like New York or which other city? Las Vegas or any of those fantastic cities made by, built by men. Lagos, Accra, Why do, you, why do you make noise when I say Lagos and Accra? I hope you are not looking down on Accra. We also have lights. We have a few lights. It's not bad for our standard. Huh? 
I mean, like, our main thing is not, we are not into lights. We have enough light. Like, it's not our, our strong point, but we have light. Now, so this city was on that side. Then she turned to this side. This is the dream she had the, on the very day that she told her parents that she was, she was tired of the church. And she looked in the other direction and she saw another city. With, also with light, but not to that extent. So maybe a bit like Accra versus Las Vegas. Yes. There was like not so many lights in this direction, but this one was. And suddenly in the dream, a man appeared. And the man said, hello. He had a very nice voice. His, his voice was a tenor voice. It was a velvet voice. Yes. No, not a deep bass, bass voice. That, would, that may alarm you. It was, it was a tenor. And he said, hello. It seems I know you somewhere. Your face is familiar. Then he introduced himself. My name is Jack Toronto. What's your name? And he said to her, it seems you are lost. She said, yeah. And he asked her, did you want to go to that city? She said, yes, that's where I want to go. And he said, oh, I know the way. I'll take you there. I'll be there for you. I'm the man you need. I'm the one you're looking for. And she asked him, can you really take me there? He said, he said, yes, I can. I know the way. So he took her. She said, I'll go with you. And in the dream, she went with this handsome, charming man with a tenor velvet voice. He was immaculately dressed in a suit. Wow. And as they approached the city, he was chatting with her, cracking jokes. You know, girls like guys who make you laugh. You made me laugh, you made me cry. It's true or it's not true? She was laughing all the way to the city. And when they got to the city, when they got to the city in question, they entered and she was so engrossed with the beautiful lights that she didn't even notice until she looked at the man she realized that his features were changing. His handsome face was changing. The nose got longer. The ears got longer and started falling down this way. The eyes started to have a red flash in the middle. Wow. Wow. His fingernails became longer. His face and his lips twisted and were hanging out. 
and she realized that the man had turned into a demon. And suddenly she was frightened. And then to make things worse, the lights in the city started to go off. Black, 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 black. And she was there alone in the darkness with this handsome man who had turned into a Dracula. And she screamed, ah! and then she woke up. Mercy. Mercy. Now, the next morning, she came down. Her parents were having breakfast. And she said, Daddy, you remember yesterday I came to see you. And I told you that I want to go on my own and have my own life. I've changed my mind about that. Because God had spoken to her and showed her a clear vision that she was not following the true light. Yes. John 1 9 says, That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. The light of business is not the true light. You know, I can tell you, 31 years ago, I was a medical student, 31 years ago. And 31 years ago, about 30 years ago, I finished medical school, actually 30, 31 years ago. I have not followed medicine I have not followed the plenty professions which are very attractive, glittering, attractive professions and careers. No. But rather, what the Bible says that he was not that light, but he was sent to testify. And to bear witness of that life. This is what I've given myself to be doing for 31 years. Since the moment I qualified in 1989, 30 years ago, on the, 20, uh, on the um, 10th of March, I became a doctor, a medical doctor, t- around 4 p.m. Yes. But, but rather, I, I have followed the mission to testify of that light that has come into the world. The true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. I've given myself for that. Yes. To testify of him. And I didn't care whether it becomes a big thing or a small thing. It's the same thing with the crusade. I didn't care whether it becomes a big thing or a small thing. I think your problem is that you care whether it becomes a big thing or a small thing. You care whether, you know, you become famous or you don't become famous. The issue is not whether you be famous or you will not be famous. The issue is that you will become a witness. You are sent to testify of that lie, whether it becomes a big thing or it, it does not become a big thing. That's not the issue. Oh, that it's become a big thing. Many great things. My, to me, some of the best camps I've ever preached, I find more powerful. There were few people. There were not many people. Yes, that's what I find. I find myself enjoying and seeing God working in a way when things are not even very big. You know, when I listened to Kenneth Hagin, one day I was listening to the same story because he has some stories that he tells all the time. You can hear them in many different messages, the same stories. Yes, just like me when I preach, you hear the same story, different messages. But when I was listening to this story, 
Then, as he was giving a little more detail, just some extra information, he said that that day, it rained. So, not many people came to church. And there were less than about 40 people. Now, that was one of the greatest visions that he had. Yes. When the Lord said to him, come up. And he said, it was raining. And he said, in that area, when it rains, it's muddy. Everything is muddy. So you can hardly move around. And that day, it rained. There were just a few, already not big, but then few, 40. Ah, and the Lord appeared. I realized that many of the great things is not about it becoming great. You see, think about how great God is. You know, when, the, when Jupiter was filmed, the first time Jupiter was filmed up close, was in 1977. 1977 to 1977. Actually, they sent the rocket 1977, and then two years later, it arrived there. And they filmed Jupiter up close. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. When you see Jupiter, you can't believe it. And in NASA, they were just awed as they watched the films coming in. This is Jupiter. Because you just see it. Jupiter is out. I don't know if you saw it, but it's there. It's just one little dot like one of the stars. But when they saw it up close, my goodness. Just 1979. These wonders have been there for years. It's 1979. I mean, thousands of years have gone by. Nobody has seen it. And God doesn't care that you don't see his great things. You are, not, you are like one of the lions in the forest. You are like one of the tigers. You are like one of the antelopes that he is having mercy on. Huh? Taron. You are like one of the antelopes that he's just showing kindness to. The light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. You are nothing. And he doesn't mind. But you mind that many people know you and see you and you become famous. So if I'm not going to become famous like bishop, then I don't want to be in the ministry and I don't want to. If I'm not going to be famous like this person, then I don't want to be a witness. If I'm not going to be great like this so and so, then I'm not for ministry. No. Obeying God is not about becoming famous. Obeying God is about... Like, this is the work that I have to use my life for. There are towns, everybody here, there is a town. I'm, I, I don't want to lie to you, please, in this conference. I don't want to deceive you. There is a town for you. There is a community waiting for you, hoping that you will come to bear witness of that light. This generation of souls, this generation of Christians is responsible for this generation of sinners. Yes. This generation of, 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 of Christians, believers, is responsible for this generation of sinners and souls. This generation, this generation of Christians is responsible for this generation of sinners. We are responsible, yes, for those who are alive today. It's our, it's our responsibility. Your your responsibility is not to become great. How many people do you think John the Baptist saw and ministered to? By the age of 30, he was executed. It's not about being famous or being glamorous. It's about bearing witness of that light. The true light that lighteth every human being that comes into this world. This is the work. And everyone here, if you were to do your part, many people will be saved. A net is made up of many little holes. 
like this, small. And everybody, you and 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 you connected. Forms is what forms the net. One person is not a net. One person is not a net. It is everybody with a small one, 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 small one. Joined together forms a massive net for people. Yes. This generation of Christians is responsible for this, gener- this generation of sinners and souls. Sympathy is no substitute for your actions. Being sympathetic is not a substitute for the action you are supposed to take. So, oh, it's really sad. Oh, it's really, you know, oh, people should know about you. Sympathy is no substitute for the actions that are expected from you. Yes. The action of telling the world about the true light. Yes. Your, 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 your school does not impress me. Your job does not impress me. Your, your education does not... Because I thank God I'm, I'm educated. Hey, geez, Father, I thank you that I obeyed my... Pa- yeah, God. If I had not obeyed my father, I would be in difficulty today. Because everything I say, it will be like, yeah, you see, you didn't go to school, so you don't understand those of us who went to school. Your mouth like a frog. Which school did I not go to? I thank God. I followed my, 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 my father's instructions to go to school. Yes. I finished school. When I finished, that's it. Yeah. I've given myself to testify. I'm not the light. I can't be. I know myself. Even if you see me after church, I can tell you why I cannot be the light. And then you also bring your notes. And then we go through together and we, we see that you cannot be the light and I cannot be the light. But I am sent to testify of that true light and bear witness of that light. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you there? Hmm. Now, that was the true light which lighted every man that cometh into the world. So anybody who comes into this world is going to walk in darkness. John chapter 8 and verse 12 says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So he is the light that lights every man that comes into the world. I'm going to ask you a question, and if you say no, I'm sorry that I'm going to pray for it to happen to you so that you can understand the scripture better. How many have ever walked in a dark room and hit your shin against a bed or something and have a lot of pain. Have you had it before? If you have not had it before, Father, give it to everyone who has not had it before. how people's whole life is so. The whole life is ah! Ah! People's whole life, it can be described as only that event. A life without light. Yes. A life without light. It's Everything about life, education, family, you, you and your parents is just quarrels and beasts. I'm telling you, it's just going to be quarrels and beasts about family. You, the only time you'll appreciate your father is when he's dead. It's true. 
The only time you'll appreciate your mother is when she's dead. Yes. The only time you appreciate your wife or your husband is when they are dead. It's true. Life would just be one painful, long, painful, painful experience. Without light. That's the true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. And that's why you are expected to tell the world about that light. Yeah. We talk of the second coming when many have not heard of the first coming. Yes. That's what's happening. We talk of the second coming when they, uh, they've not heard the first coming one. I mean, the first coming part has not been heard by a lot of people. And we say, second Jesus is coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon for who? And those who are, what, what, what are they? Those who have not heard of him, how would they know that he's coming again? Yes. Listen, if you had a cure for cancer, wouldn't it be inconceivable if you knew, you knew it. I know this, this is a cure. And you hide it from the rest of the world. And you just keep it to yourself. So, <laughs> you are dying for cancer of pancreas. Oh, okay. You say, what cancer of liver? Oh, okay. <laughs> you are what, a cancer of uh, a breast? <laughs> you have the solution for the pain and the troubles. So, which cancer? <laughs> cancer of uh, bladder. Okay. Somebody was describing a cancer that he had in the pelvis. They had to operate, to operate on him through the penis. Yes. To get to the, what do you call it? Yes. They operated on him. That's how they operate on him like that. For hours. True. Yeah. <laughs> and wouldn't it be inconceivable? You have the cures. No. So, you, you have what though? <laughs> no problem. The true light that lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Amen. Yes. So all men are not, they are not lighted. And they are walking. That's their whole life. Business, work, school, Education, everything. Verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. So he was walking in the world that he made. And Bo was just saying, hi, excuse me, excuse me. The one who made the world. Huh? But it, it happened, you know. One time I was in a, on Legon campus, University of Ghana, and I met someone. Actually, he came to, so, oh, hello. You, I wanted to, I said, hi, how are you? I said, who are you anyway? He said, I'm so and so. I said, what? And you are what? He said, oh, I'm the overseer of such and such church. I said, wow. wow. He mentioned the church. And that church, that church, I said, so you are the overseer. So I asked him, do you know who started that church? I said, no, I don't know. I'm the overseer. <laughs> and I told him, I started the church that you are. I started that church. Yes. Harvest, Harvest uh, Church on uh, Harvest Chapel on Legon Campus. I started it. 
I was in Calvary Road, which has turned into Harvest. When I was in Calvary Road, I started that church. And I left and I went to Kolebu. So now he was the overseer. I said, and those, I said, so do you know who said? I don't know. I'm the overseer. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was in the, I was there, and they did not know that I am the one who did it. So Jesus was in the world, eh? and the world was made by him. He's the founder of the world. The founder of the Jordan River, and he was being baptized in the Jordan River. And they were facing him. I mean, Pharisees were facing him. He was just looking at them. That's why when he was on the cross, and they were, he said, Father, forgive them. They, they don't know what they are doing. You don't know what you are doing. That's why Pilate's wife had a dream. He said, this man has nothing to do with him. I don't know. She said, I've had a lot of trouble in the night. I don't know who he is. Just don't touch this guy. But he did not. And then he took water and washed his hands. But you cannot wash your hands like that. That is why the whole church, since whenever, we always mention Pilate's name. Crucified under Pontius Pilate. He, should have, he shouldn't have done it. And the soldiers who slapped him, pa, pa. Hey. But you see, can you blame them? They didn't, they didn't know him. They didn't know him. They didn't know. The eye cannot see what the mind does not know. The eye cannot see what the mind does. If you don't tell them that this, the world was made by him. Even I'm telling you that the world was made by him. But, and you see, these are things in the Bible. The world was made by him. And the world knew him not. So we, don't, we don't know you. So I'm the light of the world. I'm the good shepherd. Oh, get away from there. You know, one day an archbishop, you see, I was talking to one of my pastors and I asked him, he said, his father-in-law will never visit him. And I said, oh, why? He said, it's not because my father-in-law doesn't love me, but to come to where he is, he is. Do you see? He has to pass through a country whose name begins with S. He has to fly. The flight goes to a country whose name begins with S. And then connect. But his, I think his father-in-law's friend is an archbishop. A Catholic archbishop. And one day, this Catholic archbishop flew to this country whose name begins with an S. And when he got out and he was driving in town, he was accosted by armed robbers. I mean, I don't know what they call them in that country whose name begins with an S. What do they call them? Thieves or gangsters or I don't know what. So he was wearing his Catholic dress with his crosses and everything. And he came out. Archbishop. He said it. I am Archbishop. They slap him. I was, you are what? They saw the chains. Whatever nonsense. You are Archbishop of whatever. They beat him and they took everything. Archbishop of what you what you talking about. You, you know what you are saying. So, the pastor's father, wife's father said, I will never come to this country because I have to pass through that country where they beat that archbishop, took his chains, brought his archbishop and so what? That's what they did to Jesus. You, are, you made the world and so what? You made the world and so what? Pa, pa, pa. Beat him. Slap him at the back. Crucify him. Talk. Okay, tell us who. T- Papa, tell us who slapped you. What's my name? Hey, what's my name? Hey. 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 It's very serious, though. You know, I think when you don't know Jesus, you can misbehave badly. 
How many have misbehaved badly? And how many are happy that you were not born when Jesus was alive? Because you are likely to have joined these people to crucify Jesus. You would have been there at the scene beating Jesus. He was in the world. And the world did not know him. They did not know him, so they mistreated him. They mistreated him. They mistreated him. Verse 11. John 1 verse 11. He came to his own. I'm here. His own received him not. We don't want you. We don't want you. He rushed. No, no. Who are you? These days a lot of stupid people come around saying that they are, you say you are the son of God. Nonsense. You know, that is why God needs you. You see, God loves us so much. And he wants people who are going to take their time to explain. Even the Jews today. If you sit down and explain to them why Jesus is the son of God. You see that they start believing. Today there are more Jews believing in Jesus than ever before. Yes. Because you, you can show them from the Old Testament. It's not difficult to preach to any other religion. Just go through it. Verse 12. But as many, as many, as many as received him, as many as received him, once you receive him, he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that had enough money to register. Even to them that were white skinned. Even to them who had American passports. Even to them who had connections. Even to them that believe. Just believing is enough to take you to heaven. Just believing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Just believing, just believing, just believing. Do you believe in Jesus? When my father, before my father died, I was trying to get from him that he believes in Jesus. Yes. I didn't want him to go to hell. I really didn't want it. Sometimes he'd be lying down. He was sick. He'd be lying down, breathing. <gasps> I wanted to talk to him about Jesus. Believe in Jesus. Please believe in Jesus. Please believe in Jesus. Yes. I want to tell people about Jesus. Yes, try. Believe in Jesus. I know, I don't know when you say you belong to another religion. Really, no problem. I said, you have that really. I don't even tell you about Jesus. I've, I've led so many people from other religions wow. to Jesus. Yeah. This, this, one day I led a, a, a serious, I, I cannot give you the details, a serious follower of another religion. I told him, you, you believe? He said, I, I believe. I said, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Say, Jesus, say, Jesus, I receive you. I believe in you. Yes. Yes. As many as received him, to them, he gave power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Hebrews 1 verse 5, quickly. Hebrews 1 verse 5. Hmm. But to which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son? No angel has ever had such a privilege. And he said, you are my son. As many as believe, he gave them power to become. And again, I will be to him a father. He shall be to me a son. Which, which angel has had that? 
but you and I. Huh? And anybody in Timbuktu. Huh? Have you been to Bolivia before? I've been to Cochabamba. Have you been to Ascension before? I've been there. People everywhere. Many, 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 many. All over the world. In darkness. All over the world. People are waiting. Hoping. Praying. If somebody would come, tell them, show them the light of this world. Amen. Amen. And you are the one Amen. God is going to use. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What a blessing to be a son of God. Yes. Are you glad? I mean, can you imagine you being a son of God? Now, that's serious. It's big. It's big. Amen. Now, Verse 13. Which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. That is the many that received him. He gave them power to become the sons. Put the two verses together. 12 and 13. As many as received him, he gave them power to become the sons of God. Are you seeing it on the big screen? Yes. yes. Which were born not of blood. When we say you are born again, it's not of coming out of a womb. Once more. It's born of not of the will of man, but of the will of God. God's will. God's wish. This is God's grace to me that I'm born of God today. Amen. I'm not doing a job. No, 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 no. It's not a job. This is more than a job. There's no job like telling the world about Jesus. Anyway, if you want to consider it as a job, there's no job like telling the world that Jesus is the Savior. Amen. Amen. Verse 14. Now, the word this is continuing from in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. Supernatural. Now the word, that is Jesus, was made flesh. It was converted into flesh. Yeah. That you could hold like this. And dwelt among us. He lived with us. Wow. wow. The one who was in the beginning with God before the planets were made and the stars and everything, there was nothing made without him. Everything was made by him. He made everything. He made everything. Do you understand when I say he made everything? He made everything that we have. And the word, this person who made everything was made flesh. <laughs> and dwelt, like he dwelt, he came, he went to buy food for his mother, he went to buy bread, eh? he went to the toilet, he sat on the toilet, like everybody else. He wee-weed like everybody else. He had friends. He went to school. He spoke. He chatted with people. He made friends. He had feelings. He walked where we walked. That's why when you go to Israel, when you go to Israel, yeah, we'll be there. We'll be there. One day we'll see. We have mountain of the Lord over there. I tell you. Now listen, are you there? Yeah. yeah, that's why when you go to Israel, everywhere he walked and he went, 
has been marked with something. You know, like if you take Galilee, it's a whole region. But in Cana of Galilee, Cana, where Jesus did two things there, he turned water into wine and he healed the nobleman's son. The first miracle, first miracle and first healing were in Cana. You go there, there's something there. Where he was born, where he lived, where he did this, where he went on the boat, where he crossed to Kadara, everywhere. Is the whole world keeps now, pilgrims keep coming. He dwelt, the world was made flesh. And he dwelt amongst us. Hallelujah. Amen. The word was made flesh and he dwelt amongst us. And we beheld his glory. Beauty. He was beautiful and glorious. As the glory of the only begotten of the father. Full of grace. And full of truth. The devil comes with only truth. But Jesus comes with grace and truth. Yes. You know? The devil will tell you. You are a homosexual. And you are finished. But Jesus will come and tell you. Yes, there's this problem of homosexuality. And this is grace. I like you still. I love you still. So Jesus does not only come with the truth. He comes with the truth and with grace. So when you are actually in the presence of Jesus, there is the truth. Yes, and you say yes, it's the truth. That's why you stop arguing. Stop arguing about things which are true. Because Jesus comes with truth. When you say hands up, you say, yes, it's true. My hands are up. And then grace. He said, I like you. I still want you. And you are my special son. I like you. You like me? So why do you like me? I don't know. And that's what makes us also say, how can I say thanks? How can I say thanks to God? For all the things. Here? That's why we sing the song. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amazing. It sounds beautiful. Say, a wretch like me. I once, I was lost. But now, I was blind. But now, I see. It was grace. grace. That, that taught my heart to feel and grace and grace, grace. My full of grace really wow how, how precious, precious wow how that grace appeared there are I found Already come. I have already come. It's grace that brought me safe thus far. It's grace, grace that, that brought me safe thus far. And grace will lead me home. When we This song is famous. Do you see why this song has lasted for so many years? Do you see why it's not dying down? You hear this? Because, because it's talking about the word was made flesh and lived, he lived with us. 
That's why where he lived has become important. That's why where he lived has become significant. God, he dwelt amongst us and we watched his glory. We, we beheld his glory. And he was full of grace and truth. Not just the truth. The truth is bad, bad, bad. How many realize that the truth is? Do you know one day somebody was listening to my preaching. The person is not in the first love church. Yeah, she was listening to me preaching. And people were shouting, hey, different things. So, the, the mother of this person called her daughter and said, look, me, I don't go to your church, but I can hear what is being said. Are you people hearing the message that are being preached? Very serious things are being said. Because I just hear you people shouting, hey, amen, oh, wow, and so. And she was wondering whether her daughter was listening to the messages. He said, listen to your pastor. If I heard this, I would be married today. Yes. Now, one time I remember that Archbishop Duncan Williams was at a camp we were having in, in England, Milton Keynes. I was standing there. People came around shouting and saying, he was sitting down quietly. And after he said to me, he said, he said to you, do these people know what, what did he say? He said he doesn't find it funny at all. He doesn't find it funny. And you were, you were saying some things about ministry and marriage and you were yeah. saying that there's nothing that's funny about what you're saying. Yeah. And it's even a little offensive to him that it's like they're shouting. Yes. Very serious. Now, do you know why people are shouting and seem happy when I'm preaching? Sometimes the things I'm saying are very serious. Do you know why? Because it is truth and grace. The grace is making you shout. <laughs> the grace is making you happy. But the truth is wild. Yes. 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 Because it's not just the truth. No, the truth is wild. The truths that are being preached are very wild truths. Yes. I mean, you can't say you come to church and you don't hear about it. You know, one day I went to preach in a certain country whose name begins with an S. And after, the pastor's wife said, made a comment somewhere. said, this church, we have never heard the word fornication. Never heard that word fornication. Never mentioned in this church. Yes. Like in preaching. Like sins, certain things, sins, problems. They, they've not heard such words. Those words. It's not, it's not, it's not said. Yes. But you see, there is no group of people where we don't have such things. It's, 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 it's. Not that it's bad, but it's an unfortunate reality. Yes. So you see that the truth is here, but there's also grace. So that's how come you're even happy with the wild realities about yourself. And you can see that there's some grace as well. So you, you'll be shouting and you'll be happy. So people who listen, they may think that Maybe you've not heard the truth, but maybe you have felt more of the grace. <laughs> yes. Full of grace and truth. Yes. I mean, the woman who was caught by the, in adultery, she was caught in the very, so when, when she was caught, she was completely naked. She was naked like a banana when she was caught. They stood and said, put on your clothes, we are taking you to Jesus now. So when they caught, they said, this woman was caught in the very act. Like, she, she, we, we, we waited for her. Even under her clothes, she's not wearing, a, a, what do you call it? We have brought her to, to die because we are going to kill her now. She just put on a cloth and came for execution. And Jesus came full of 
truth and grace. He didn't say, she hasn't done it. I tell you, she, I know her personally. She has never done it. You guys are liars. You didn't see it well. This and that. In fact, she was just bathing when you went there. It's not that she was whatever. I know. No, he didn't defend her. He said, oh. So he told the woman, he said, look. He called her up and said, listen, come. Don't do that again. If you do, they catch you, they'll kill you. <laughs> that was the grace of God. Hallelujah. That was the grace of God. Play on. Jesus said, play on, woman. Live on, live on, live on, live on, live on, live on. Live on. I don't condemn you. Yes. So we beheld his glory. Full of grace. Full of truth. One day I had a group of pastors. And I was just talking with them. And suddenly, like it was like a flashback, a vision. And I saw all, all of them. Nobody has been able to be perfect. Struggling, struggling, struggling. But they were still around. That's Jesus. You will be struggling, but you'll be there. You'll be struggling, but you'll be there. I see you making it in the name of Jesus. Tell your neighbor, I may be struggling today, but I'm making it by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Sit down. You don't want to sit down? Now, John bear witness of him and cried saying, This was he of whom I spake, that he that cometh after me is preferred before me because he was before me. Amen. And of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. You have received of the fullness of God. Grace, grace, grace. How many will agree that it's just amazing grace? Huh? Amazing grace. You shouldn't have been here. You shouldn't have been here. Thank God for his mercies. But I tell you, even though you have received grace, it doesn't mean that you'll be full of kindness. It's true. That's what, I, that's what I have found. The fact that you've received this great grace doesn't mean that you are going to be full of grace yourself. Yes. That's, that's, that's one of the amazing... You know, when I was in medical school, we were... One time, one of, the, one of my mates made a comment. He said that when I become a doctor and I become a lecturer, what I will do to the students... You know, and I was thinking that uh, we are suffering in the school and we are struggling and why don't you rather feel that when I become a doctor and a lecturer I will be very kind to the students but that is not how people think that's not how people think there are people who have been prisoners before and they became prison officers when they became prison officers, they are very wicked to the prisoners. It's true. So you would have thought that people will be kind when they have been shown kindness. That's not how people are. That's what I've found. And that's why the world is full of churches which are dead to this message of Jesus, Savior of the world. There's nothing to them. They're just economical, whatever, doing this, doing that, whatever. Very wicked people. Yes. Because even though you've been shown grace, it doesn't mean you will show grace to people. Yes. And it's interesting that Jesus, who has not committed any of those sins, had more grace to show this woman. 
Yes. And you would have thought. Yeah. You know, one day I, I saw, a, I mean, a sister, she was blasting some. I mean, how she's going to commit fornication? I mean, I mean, how? I mean, how? And immediately as she was, I mean, so angry with the people, I had a flashback. A flashback of her heydays. Today with one from this country, another from another country, another from another country. International fornication. Crossing borders. But now she suddenly seemed very, I mean, intolerant of anybody making a mistake. It's amazing. You would have thought that when somebody has received grace, it's also full of grace. No, 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 no. She was, I mean, I mean, how? I mean, I was, and I had a flashback. And I saw the nations that had been, nations that had visited her. She had been visited by nations. <laughs> Fornication without borders. Some of you are only national fornicants. There are international ones. Now, some of you know that you shouldn't even be in church. You shouldn't be in church. You know yourself. And God has brought you to church. Will you not bring other people to church? Hmm. Now, John chapter 1 verse 15, verse 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So when you talk about Jesus, you are talking about grace and truth. Amen. Amen. So grace and truth have come by Jesus. So don't only come with the truth. Grace. Grace. Play on. I mean, it's much nicer to watch a soccer match where the referee is so how do they say play on? How does the reference say? You are going to be pastors. You will be sitting there. People are falling to sin. You just get up from your desk and play on, play on, play on. the person who is sitting next to you who is sleeping just say sleep on play on The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Wow. Grace, the truth, but grace also came by Jesus Christ. Verse 18. No man has seen God at any time. This is a wonderful verse that we found yesterday, isn't it? No man has seen God. 
the only begotten son, which is in the bosom of the father, he has declared him. Hallelujah. Verse 19. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who art thou? Verse 20. And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. You know you are not the Christ, don't you? I'm not the Christ. Now, verse 21. And they asked him, what then? Are thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Are thou that prophet? And he answered, no. Verse 22. Then they said, who art thou that we may give an answer to them that sent us? Because he was baptized. When you go to Israel, you'll understand. Where, where John was baptizing, you'll be there, you'll be there. Where John was baptizing in Jerusalem, uh, in Jordan, is quite far. So people were sent, like the big short pastors couldn't come there. They were wearing their robes and they were in town. So they had to send people all the way to Jordan to go and find out, who are you? But notice what he said. What sayest thou of thyself? So when you are a call, when you are a man of God, and God has called you, there is a place where you are supposed to say something of about yourself. You may think you are being humble. It says, what sayest thou of thyself? Yes. What you say of yourself is also important. What sayest thou? That's why Paul said, always he used to say, Paul, an apostle. Whereunto I am appointed a preacher, an apostle, a teacher. Yes. So what sayest thou of thyself? What do you say of yourself? What do you say about yourself? What, what do you say? And that's what we have to now start to say the right thing. I am appointed a preacher. An apostle. I am here to testify. Amen. What do you say about yourself? Yes. Instead of saying, I'm a dirty... I'm a dirty sinner. You think John the Baptist was not a sinner? John was equally a sinner. Wow. I'm a bad boy. Yeah. I'm a bad girl. Yeah. Oh, I'm an old funny cunt. Yeah. Everyone knows me. I'm a struggling homosexual. Yeah. No, don't say, don't say that. I'm anointed. You say I'm anointed. anointed. I'm appointed. Yeah. A preacher. Yeah. An apostle. A teacher of the Gentiles. Yes. A missionary. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm just a pornographer. Tell your neighbor, you are not a pornographer. You are not. Don't say that again. Verse 23. And he said, I am the voice. I am a voice. I am a voice. You are a voice. Yes. You know, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. You know, one day I was in Seattle. And I was preaching. After the service, T.L. Osborne was preaching in the next service. And I preached in the first service. And he was preaching the next one. When we came to the back room, the pastor said to me, you know, we are also, I preached about Lazarus and the rich man. And he said, we are also affected. And disturbed by this message you've preached. Then the pastor told someone, yeah, that's his, that's his, and he said, actually said to me, he said, that's your calling to challenge people to work for God. Yes. 
So your calling can be summarized also in a phrase. Not just I'm an apostle, I'm a pastor, I am a this, I am a that. That's why John said, I am a voice. Crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So you can also summarize your calling in sometimes in a phrase. I am the one who does this. Yes, I am, you know, I know even what should be written on my grave. Yes, I know what should be written on my grave. What should be written on my grave is a summary of my calling. Yes. Of what I try to do. Yes. (laughs) What have you tried to do also? What have you tried to do? Yes. Are you there? Yes. What have you tried to do with your life? What sentence can be used to describe your life? Hmm. Verse 25. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, nor neither that prophet? And John answered them and said, I baptize with water, but there is one. Hallelujah. That standeth among you, whom you know not. He it is who coming after me is prepared before me, whose shoes latcheth I am not worthy to unloose. Hallelujah. So Jesus is standing in our midst. And he needs somebody to tell the world that Jesus is here. People don't know. That's John's work. To tell the world that there's somebody who you don't know. His name is Jesus. And he's right in your midst. Open your heart to him. So John was an apostle also, a saint one. But his message was used to describe his calling. And also he picked it from Isaiah. I'm a voice crying in the wilderness. And I'm telling people there is someone standing here now. There's someone. So everybody became alert in the spirit. Everybody became aware. Everybody became conscious. Something great is coming. Something great is coming. Something great is He's right here. He's standing in our midst. Who is preferred before me. And that's your job. To point to people and say, Jesus is in your midst right now. Open up and receive this great person. Are you going to tell the world? What are you going to tell the world? That Jesus is the savior of the world. Jesus. 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 Look at the people at the back. Jesus. 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 You may be seated.
Are you there? Now, Verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. The Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, John's ministry was to keep pointing to Jesus. That's Jesus. Look at the Lamb of God. He is amongst you. Open your heart. This is what we are also supposed to do. But we don't do it. Is it not true? What are we doing instead? Huh? Economic empowerment. Huh? Financial stability. And what else are we doing? Huh? Securitization of your future earnings. Seven steps to becoming a millionaire at 25. And what else? Huh? Politics. Economic emancipation. Amazing. And the Lamb of God who takes away sins, which is the problem, your sin and my sin, is the problem that the police have, the problem that the soldiers have, the problem that the minister of water, light, road, rivers, education, health, president, vice president, judges, mayors, all are sinners. The UN general secretary is a sinner. Eh? Is it not amazing? You may look very good, but you are a sinner. Yes. And when you go to Rwanda, you know, we had a secretary general once and um, from Ghana and I tell you when you go to Rwanda you see that they show that I think he was the secretary general during the genocide is it not true? Kofi Annan yes and he didn't help them so even though he was like supposed to be a very good person you see you will see that sinner you will be shown to be a sinner. No matter how diplomatic and good you look, you see that you are a sinner. A sinner is in charge of everything. When you watch them giving speeches during the genocide, you can't even believe that human beings can speak this way. They say we are, we are assessing the situation and the words say this and that and that. A long salad of words. Hey. But they did not lift one finger to stop the genocide. So, Jesus is the lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Yes, this is, this is why God sent Jesus, to take away our sin. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's the whole purpose of God sending Jesus to take the sin of the world away. 
once and for all. Yeah, which is the issue. That's the real issue. With the president of Mozambique and the president of Zimbabwe and the president of South Africa and the president of Ghana and the president of America and the president of Switzerland, the president of England, the president of Saudi Arabia is the sin. <laughs> How many have realized that the world cannot change with sinners in charge? It can only get worse. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. So, brothers and sisters, we are talking about Jesus. And I want you to familiarize yourself with who Jesus is. And the church has a song like that, who Jesus is. Can anybody tell? Can anybody take me to where Jesus is? Where Jesus is? Can anybody take me to where Jesus is? I hear that he can mend a broken heart. Take me to ways he can put back a life that's been torn apart. Take me to where he is. Only he can supply my need. Take me to where he is. Take me to Jesus. Take me, take me. Where Jesus can anybody take me mm. to where Jesus is? Where Jesus is? Can anybody take me oh, oh, to where Jesus is? Can anybody take me to where Jesus is? Where Jesus is? Can anybody take me to where Jesus is? He knows my future, he knows my past. Take me to where he is. Everything I need, he'll supply. Take me, take me where Jesus is. Take me to where he is. Oh, take me, take me to where Jesus is. Can anybody take me? Sing it now. To where Jesus is, where Jesus is, can anybody take me to where Jesus is? Can anybody take me, anybody take me to where Jesus is, where Jesus is? Can anybody take me oh, to where Jesus is? Can anybody take me, anybody take me to where Jesus is? Jesus is, can anybody take me to where he is? Can anybody take me? Take, take me, Lord, to where Jesus is, where Jesus is. Can anybody take me to where Jesus is? Wow. Is there any other song like that? What song is that? I can't hear you. Everybody's, Everybody's got, got to, know. to know Oh, who Jesus is, mm. who Jesus really is. Everybody's got to know oh, who Jesus is, who Jesus is. Don't you think they ought to know oh, who Jesus is? Jesus really is. Don't you think they ought to know oh, mm. who Jesus is? Beautiful. Who Jesus is. Amen. So Jesus is the answer for the world today. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Yes. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Is it not true? Yes. Behold the Lamb of God. You do well if you preach about Jesus. Yes. You do well if you preach about Jesus. Amen. You do better if you preach about Jesus. And if you stay with your calling to talk about Jesus, the Savior of the world.
Amen. Take out your offering. We are going for breakfast. You don't want to go for breakfast? Tell the truth with grace. Truth and grace. Father, thanks a million as we present our offering today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Ashes, receive the offering. Hallelujah. Amen. What a powerful time we're having. Yes. Yes. Thank you, prophet, for a blessed time in God's presence. Amen. You may be seated very quickly. We are taking a break now. We're coming back at 11 a.m. It's just an hour. Um, eat, freshen up, and um, we come back. Amen. Amen. Two other important announcements. Um, the spaces for the tours are running out, so I'm encouraging you to um, sign up. Even if you can't go today, sign up for whenever you're going because the times are finishing. 
Um, so make sure you do that um, before today is over. Amen. How many of you are planning to go on a tour? How many of you have signed up? Yes. How many of you have signed up? Yes. How many of you have not signed up but are planning to sign up? Hey, you guys, the spaces are running out of. So make sure you do that and um, uh, God is blessing us. You can see the tour numbers on the screen, but the best is to go to the reception and physically register. Are you with me? Yes. And then finally, um, I just want to comment on the, um, if you are sitting in front, please try not to sleep. And if you are going to sleep, try not to come because it's going up and I think especially in the front we should ask our friends to leave that please I think you're not really with us so please excuse us here yeah. I think it's becoming too much so I will walk up to you and ask you to leave with all due um, benevolence but it's, it's not the best I don't know if you get because last night I heard people chatting and laughing all through the night and instead of sleeping you come here to come and sleep but that's not why we traveled from where we came to come here and, and fall asleep, you know. Some of us have come from very far. We didn't come here for that. So I just want to comment on that, um, you know, so that we, the young people, stay. We, we have to stay awake, okay? God bless you. Stand to your feet. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, communion. Participation of the brackets, which includes all the important people for my life, and the first love of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Pause, pause, pause. One last announcement. At the next session, you won't be allowed in without a tag. I have I've been getting a lot of messages, people asking me, Do I need a tag? You know, everybody needs a tag. The tag costs money. The tag costs 30 cities. Pay to register for the camp. Come in. Don't pay. Don't come in. Amen. 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 So the tags are happening on the side, on the left side, on my left in the square. And I believe it's a blessing. We have a short time, so let's go. 11 o'clock, we'll be back.